video, we're going to be taking a look at Assignment 1. So the first step is to download the Assignment1.pdf file. This is going to be a list of steps and instructions for how to complete the assignment. The second file to download is going to be the Example Solution PDF, and we'll get into that in a second. So this assignment is going to have five parts. Do make sure that you complete them all and submit all the files. So there's going to be five parts to follow and three files to submit. And the first part is going to be called Part 1 Situational Setup. And the idea behind this part is we're going to be creating our own new fictional company. And this is a company that's going to follow us for a few assignments in this course. So do try to put a little bit of thought into it. And the rules for creating this company are that it has to be a company that's at a very early startup phase. So this is going to be just you and you're working from home. And what your company is going to be making, it's up to you, but it does have to manufacture a physical product. So it can't be a service-based company, it has to be a product-based company. And it has to be done with only one employee, you. And it has to be doable from your home. So something like graphic design would not be any good because that's a service. It's not a product that has physical parts to put together. Something like making an electric car or a new type of phone also aren't going to work because that's not something you could really feasibly do out of your home. Rather, you might want to think of something that you could like make with your own hands or assemble easily, maybe like scented candles, bath bombs, soaps, things like that. So once you have the idea for your product, you're going to have to answer a few questions. The company name. This has to be a unique name that's not already in use by a real business. The best way to check would be to simply Google it and see if anything comes up. The next is going to be the company location, where it is on the planet. It has to be a real location. It could just be where you are right now, or if you had another idea for where your company might be, that's fine too. But just note that it will affect a few things later on, like sale price, minimum wage, things like that. The company function or product, so that's going to be what does your company do, what does it make, what does it use to make it, things like that. And how do you sell your product? Are you selling it in a retail store? Are you selling it through Amazon? Are you selling it through eBay, Etsy? You have to explain how you're actually getting this product to the consumers, how you're selling it to them. So to give an example that I've come up with, I have a company named Forest City Ducks. This isn't a real company. I don't actually do this. Um, this is just a sort of a funny example that we could use for the sake of this course. So the company name is Forest City Ducks. And you can see here, right, uh, this is the kind of Word document you're going to have to prepare. It should have your name, student number, name of your company, Forest City Ducks, and then the answer to each one of those questions we asked. So the name, Forest City Ducks, it's going to be located in London, Ontario, Canada. And what this company is going to do is they're going to print 3D rubber ducks, sort of like this guy here. But the catch is they're going to be customizable. So the client or the customer can pick a custom face, either scan their own face, or they can pick one from selected models. So maybe, for example, they want to print this little duck here. This one's got Baby Yoda on it. Or maybe they want to give their duck some strongman arms, like this guy right here. So that's going to be the physical product that's produced is going to be the rubber ducks that are customized. And the raw materials that we're going to be using to make those is going to be 3D printer filament. And manufacturing equipment would be the 3D printer. How we're going to sell them? We're going to sell them through Etsy. So Etsy, if you're not familiar with it, it's sort of a marketplace, sort of like Amazon, but a lot smaller. And it's just for homemade sort of hand or customized things. And now this example is silly. But there are actually people in Etsy that do sell 3D prints. So it's not that far off from reality. Now, your company should be substantially different from this example that I'm using in the assignment. Um, it can still use a 3D printer if you want. It definitely doesn't have to. It could be any product you want. But it should be substantially different from this example of printing 3D ducks. So if you wanted to, for example, maybe print 3D portraits of people, that'd be a fine company idea. Or you could also do something completely different, like scented candles. It's completely up to you, as long as it follows the rules in the assignment. So after you've completed this and got your Word document all set up, you can then move on to part two. In part two, we're going to be taking a look at the product costs for your company. And this is where we're going to start using Excel. So when we get into these parts that deal with Excel, I encourage you to look at the example solution. What the example solution is, is it's not an actual solution to the assignment. You can just submit this. What it is, is it's a PDF that shows what your Excel sheet should look like when you're done. In this case, it's filled with data for my rubber duck for a city duck company. 
Yours should be filled with data related to your company. So your costs will be different, the names of the costs will be different, and the actual amounts will be different. But it's going to fill the same format. So it should look similar like this, then should be in the same cells. So in part one, we're going to be looking at all the different costs that go into our product. So for me, all the different costs that go into making this rubber duck, those would be things like 3D printer filament, maybe some glue and paint, if I want to like stick on googly eyes, or if I want to paint them. And we'd have to divide those into the different categories that we talked about when we talked about product costs in that first lecture. So this would be things like direct material costs, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. To give an example for this company, the 3D printer filament, the actual plastic that goes into the ducts, would be a direct material cost, because that's quite easy to track how much is used by each duct. So you should have at least four in each category, um, but you don't have to be complete. I know that it might be hard, depending on your product, to give an exact complete list of everything that goes into it, but you have at least four in here, and no more than 20, or no more rather than how many are available to fit into this template. I think it's a bit less than 20. So after we've done all that, this thing will tell us, or this document rather, will tell us all the calculations we have to do. And I do denote them all with these numbers here. So it'll be like P2.3 means that this is in part two of the document, and it's step three. I use this little format to make it really easy to refer to different parts of the document. So if you have a question about something, you can tell me that you have a question about part P2.1. That just makes it a lot clearer where we are in the document. I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. I expect that you can do that, and read it over. But it's basically going to be stepping our through, calculating our costs and the totals for that. The next part is going to be profit margin. And the idea here is we're going to try to calculate our margin for this product. So there'll be different boxes that you have to fill in, but you're going to be creating this Excel sheet from scratch. So you're going to have to do all the formatting. You're going to have to add the headers and things like that. Once you've got that profit margin, then you'll be able to tell is this product feasible at the amount I want to sell it for? If not, you'll have to play with the numbers a bit, see if maybe you have to sell it for a bit more to increase your margin, or maybe you have to make more in the month, things like that. So you have to tweak the numbers a bit, see if it's feasible, and then you'll have to give a short paragraph explaining why it's feasible. And that paragraph will go right in your Excel document in this feasibility box. The next part of the assignment is going to be, you're going to go from making a single product to making sort of variations on the theme. So if our basic product was a single rubber duck, a variation might be a smaller duck or a bigger duck, or maybe one with arms like this guy. So if you're making something like scented candles, maybe your variation, your base model would be like a standard scented candle, or your variation might be like an extra large scented candle. Or you might have like a standard white candle, and your variation might be a red scented candle. But the key thing here is those variations have to have slightly different product costs. You won't have to calculate all the product costs for the variations. We're going to sort of just estimate those based on the base model. But you do have to come up with at least three variations on your product. And that can be anything just changing color, changing size, changing styles. It's really up to you as long as you can calculate or at least roughly estimate um, the difference in product costs. And then we're going to go through and we're going to do the same sort of calculations again to find the margin now when we're selling four products, the base one plus three new ones. And then we're going to use Excel to do a few analysis on this data. Then lastly, we're going to be creating an invoice for a customer that we are pretending purchased your product. And the key thing here is each sheet is going to keep referring to the last sheet after it. So if you make a modification in one sheet, it has to update all the numbers all the way to the next sheet. And you should be able to do that if you're using Excel formulas. So a really important thing in this assignment is when it says to do a calculation, to write a formula, to use Excel function, that means that this has to be a dynamic formula that's going to change when you start editing the numbers. And all that means is it should be an Excel formula you're using, and you shouldn't be hard coding in values. So when I say calculate, for example, the sum of the direct material costs, you actually have to use an Excel function to calculate that. You can't calculate it with a calculator in real life and then type the number in. You have to actually use an Excel formula. The reason for that is, one, I want you to know how to use the Excel formulas, but more importantly, when you're actually working with Excel, you want everything to update when you change it. So if I change the cost of the PLA filament in my example, 
I'd want the total cost of the direct material cost to change as well. I wouldn't want to have to go through all the sheets and make sure I make the change in every single cell. I want it to all be dynamic. That's the whole point of electronic spreadsheets. And if you have any questions about this assignment, there's now an assignment one form open on OWL. So you can post there if it's a general question and that doesn't require you to post your solution. If it's a question that's specific to your assignment that would require someone to see your solution to answer, then you should either contact the TA through email, contact myself through email, or attend one of our office or consulting hours. And one last thing I will mention is that there are strict rules about how you name your files. So make sure that you follow those and all the instructions in the assignment so you're not docked any points. So that's all I have for you for this video. I would highly encourage you to take a start right away and not leave this to the end. The document is a bit long. It's mostly simple steps, but some of them are a bit tricky when we start getting into lookups and things like that. So make sure you leave enough time both to work on the assignment and to allow for things like getting stuck and needing to contact a TA or myself for help. You don't want to leave it to the last moment and find out that you got stuck and are in urgent need of help because at that last few minutes before the due date, you probably won't be able to get to us in time. So allow enough time to allow us to help you. Thank you for watching and have a great day.